The one on the left is a PD3 series, and the one on the right is a PD4 series. So this is a PD365. It's actually the wireless model that actually comes with a uh, wireless charger, as you can see here. Uh, I'm sure you can see that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's a wireless model. But it doesn't make any difference. The uh, It's exactly the same. PD3, PD4, just so we're clear. Okay, very good. First things first is I'd like to explain the problem that I'm actually looking to solve. So let's go to our downloads folder and assume that you've already downloaded the PD3 or PD4 CPS package, which contains a load of firmware and two different versions of the CPS. But just to explain that, I'm going to open this document here. Okay, the background here is quite literally, as it says here, Itera have uh, released their latest DMR firmware and customer programming software. Well, to cut a long story short, I don't need to read the rest of that. It just means that the latest version for the PD3, uh, PD3, uh, if we can select that, no, we can't, PD3 and PD4 series radios is 2.5.13.001. Now, that's all very well, but actually what that means is that only works with the latest firmware of radio. So here's where it gets complicated, and bear with me because I'm going to try and explain this as best I can. So the latest firmware is actually version 2.08.01.502. Bear in mind that this video is being recorded on the 16th of April 2019. So if you're watching this video three years from now, obviously this is not going to be the case. But for now, on the 16th of April, as you can see there, uh, it is version 2.8.01.502 for the PD4 series and version 2.06.04.502 for the PD3 series. However, there is a caveat here. That is the case, but only for radios that were supplied with the version 2.0 firmware. So that applies here, 2.0 firmware for the PD4, and it applies here for the PD3. Why that matters is that <laughs> the latest firmware that you can possibly load onto a PD3 series that was supplied with version 1.0 firmware is version 2.05.15.001. That's for a PD3, and the same applies for a PD4. So if you've got a PD4, a PD405, PD415, 485, these are European models, EU, or actually they're EMEA models, as in Europe, Middle East, and Africa models. Um, if they were supplied with version 1.0 firmware, the maximum firmware you can load on is version 2.05.13.001. I know that might not make any sense right now, but bear with me, it'll all become clear. So let's go back to our downloads folder. And again, I'm just assuming that you've downloaded everything from either our website or your dealer has supplied you with absolutely everything. And as if by magic, they'll start appearing here. So yep, there we go. So that's as if I've just downloaded them from our website or Hytera's website or wherever, wherever you get your software, your CPS and firmware from. Now, you will notice that we have two different versions here. So we have the CPS, Customer Programming Software, PD3 and PD4, version 2.05.03.002.em5. And I've put in brackets old because I want to know that that's not the newest version of the software but I will need that if I have an older radio with a version 1 firmware now it might be starting to make sense to you okay if not continue watching and I will it will become clear I, I give you my word the newer software is version 2.05.13.001 is now that is very important that dot is there basically is the new version of Hytera's software or Hytera's um, CPS, so customer programming software, client programming software. So now we've established we've got two different versions of the software, old and new. If you have 
really really old PD 405s or PD 365s and I'll just pull the uh, picture back in there so this one here as you can see this tiny little thing this is a PD 365 and this one here that you can see this one that's slightly bigger is a PD 405 not that much bigger as you can see but nevertheless uh, it's a 405 so if you have um, an old one with old firmware again so an old 365 with a firmware a version 1.0 or a PD 405 there with firmware 1.0 you need old software if you have <laughs> A PD365 or PD355, 365, 375, whichever, with 2.0 firmware, this one, you will need new. Or again, if you have firmware 2.0, PD405, 415, 485, you need the new. And we refer to this as the IS version of the software. The most difficult part of this is actually explaining how we can install them side by side because we actually need to do that if if we've got old radios you know say for example we've got an old 405 um unfortunately we're going to have to program it with the old software if it's, we've got a version one co-plug on it, 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 it a version one firmware i beg your pardon not a co-plug a version one firmware on it unfortunately we're not going to be able to update that to the very latest firmware if it's a version one However, if it is a version 2, we will be able to update it to the very latest firmware. Nevertheless, it does not stop you from using your radio as normal and programming it as normal. It just means that we need the older software, this one. So first things first, what I'm going to do is take you through actually installing this software. When you download it from us or even from Hytera, uh, if you're a dealer, then um, it comes as a zip file. Yours may not say the .zip at the end, but if you just look at the file type in this column, it will always say compressed zipped folder. So what we do is we right click and click extract all. We'll just leave the default location, which is actually a subfolder within here. And you can leave the box ticked that says show extracted files when complete. So we'll leave that ticked because that's actually really useful. So it'll open a new folder that we can install our files from. Okay, good, there we go. So if we, it opens a new folder, as you can see, but also the maybe a folder within that, depending on the uh, zip program you use. The first thing we need to do is, as always with Hytera software, there'll be an SN file, meaning serial number, and also there will be a setup.exe. So let's double click on the SN, and then what we're gonna do is not the SN bit, but the bit in front of it or below it there, kind of, select that and click copy and then we're going to double click on the setup.exe and we are going to continue and let it run through the installation yeah here we go so password it's asking you for a password and it is uh, the sn file that we copied from earlier we're just pressing paste so actually let me just show you that again right click click paste and click next click next again of course, we accept the license terms because it wouldn't work. We are called Radiotronics, uh, and we'll use that as a username and the name. You can use your own name or your company name. That's up to you. And then we just click Install. Okay, so that may take a few seconds. Mm. Yeah, that completed a lot faster than I expected it to. But okay, that's fine. So... Now that we've done that, if we very quickly just click on the start menu, scroll down to H, click on Hytera, you'll see it's actually there. It's a little green one there that says Hytera Customer Programming Software. Now, here's what we need to do. So, we'll leave this particular folder open and minimize it. Then we'll right click here and click File Explorer. Click C Drive, click Program Files, click Hytera. And you'll find the uh, Hytera customer programming software here. Right, okay, so what we want to do is we want to copy and then click in the white space. So let me just show you that again. This is selected in blue. Right click, click copy, select in the white space, 
and click paste. It will say you need administrative privileges to do this. That's OK. Just click OK. Now you'll notice you have a folder that says High Tier Customer Programming Software dash copy. Click on that and press F2, which is what I did. Let me just show you that again. Click on it and I pressed F2. That is the same as clicking on it, right clicking and clicking rename. Then we're going to call it, um, we're going to call it Hytera CPS V1. Okay. So we've renamed that to Hytera CPS version 1. Double click on that. And then here is the CPS. So actually, what we need to do is click Send To. And we're just going to send that to the desktop. And you'll notice if we minimize this and minimize this, we actually have two links on the desktop now. Again, we'll click on that one, right click and click Rename, and call that one, let's call it Hytera PD4 CPS V1. This may seem like I'm going around the houses here, but there is a good reason for that. The next thing we need to do is click on the start menu and type remove and you'll come up with this link add or remove programs it's the same in um, Windows 7 however the dialog box uh, this part of the uh, dialog looks a little different so what we're looking for is we'll scroll down here and we are looking for Hytera customer programming software version 2. Point blah blah blah. Click uninstall. That's it. And we click yes. We do want to complete the remove this application and click yes. Right, there we go. All done. So that's now uninstalled. If we go back to the desktop, look, it's gone. But our version that we saved by copying and pasting it earlier is still there. And that's CPS version 1 which still works, as we can see. Okay, good, so let's close that. We just verified that that still works and CPS version one is still installed. Let's go back to our downloads. Do you remember earlier? I said that this was the old one and this here is the new one. Okay, let's click extract all and allow it to open a folder for us. Again, we've got a folder and then again, we have an sn.txt, so copy that. Right click, click copy, and then we double click on the setup and click yes. And again, we're just mirroring what we did earlier. So we'll right click here, click paste and click next, next. Yes, I accept because it won't allow us to do anything other. Uh, copy and we'll just paste Radiotronics into that box as well. You can put whatever you want in those boxes. It doesn't matter. And you will notice. OK, finish, close. And minimize that you'll now see that we now have programming software is uh, leave that exactly as it is if this one is called version 1 and we only know that we know that there is only version 1 and 2 by process of elimination if that's called version 1 that's called version 2 but just to be sure let's double click on it all right that's that one as you can see with the, let's just have a look and click about so we can see again version 02.05.03.002 which was that one that one there look yep and then we'll just click OK file and exit okay and then this one is the version 2 or the newest version which is the IS version and again click about and then we'll just click here and you'll see if we look 02.05.13.001 Right, so we have now proved that we now have uh, version 1 and version 2 of the PD3, PD4 CPS installed. Here's a little trick. You can open them both at the same time. <laughs> so actually, I've got version 1, or the old version, if you will, and version 2, the new version. All right, so let's just close those for just for one minute. And we're just going to plug in the cable for the PD3. Yep, there we go. 
Right, so the cable is now connected at COM port 4. Um, we now just need to connect the cable into here. So I'll just make that a little bit bigger for us so we can all see. The cable uh, that we need to connect is this one. If you need a cable like this, be sure to see our website. Uh, there we go. It only goes in one way, but we have to try it three or four times, don't we? Typical USB. Okay. Uh, ironically, this is not a USB uh, cable. But anyway, um, so now we've got it connected. Let's see if we can read this radio. So first of all, we're going to go to version one software, which is this one. And we'll, we'll click here to just tell it that COM port 4 is a COM port we're actually using. Click OK. And then we're going to click here, which is the read radio uh, command. Yep, yeah, that's reading. Okay, so as you can see, the radio has read successfully. Yep, yeah, and this is a PD365, uh, as you can see. Well, it's obvious that it's a PD365, I suppose, but nevertheless, uh, just so it is. And. Um, it's a 430 to 470 model. And if you have a quick look here, it shows you the firmware version that's actually installed in the radio. Right, let's pop back to our uh, document earlier. So let's just take a note of that, 02.02.11. So if you remember, um, that is version one firmware because it's, 02, it's a predecessor to this, which is 02.05. So let's just pop back. Ours was 02, uh, sorry, 2.02.11. So 2.02 .02 predates 2.05. So the only software we can program this radio with, unfortunately, is, uh, is version one. However, if we tried this, or this is version two, remember, so this is the IS software, or the 2.05.13. There we go. Yeah. Let's see if we can read this radio using the newer version of the software. Model settings does not match. So as you can see, we read the radio perfectly with this software because it's got a uh, software version equal or prior to this one. So that means we need to use uh, the version 1 software. But when we tried to read it using this software, and I'll just demonstrate that again for a second, uh, model settings does not match. And that is the reason that we need to have two different versions of the CPS installed on our computer. The same goes for the version 8 and version 9 of the uh, software we need for this radio, which is the PD665, I believe. Nevertheless, we'll cover that in a future video. Today's video was literally to explain how to install both versions of software and why we need them. I suppose I could finish this video by just demonstrating that this particular radio has a B2 code plug on it. I don't think that's necessary. We've proven that the earlier radio doesn't read all right in newer software. It needs the older software. And the point of this video is to explain that we need both versions of the software installed on our computer if we are an owner of a PD4 or a PD3 radio. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post a new video or start a live stream.